trending in true crime. The ex-girlfriend of actor Jonathan Major says that it felt like she got hit by a bus the day after he allegedly attacked her. Now that's what Grace Jabari told a Manhattan jury on Thursday in the actor's assault trial. She spent hours on the witness stand giving very emotional testimony about an incident that happened, as she said, in the back seat of a car back in March. Now prosecutors say that Majors hit Jabari on the side of her head, fractured her finger, and tossed her, quote, like a football after she saw another woman had texted him. But the defense says that Jabari uh, was uh, not uh, was the was the real aggressor in this case. In court on Thursday, Major's attorneys played video of her hanging out at a nightclub after the fight. They also played body camera footage from the next day of Jabari telling police that she couldn't remember how she got injured. If convicted, Majors faces up to a year in jail. But here's the question. Who do you believe, him or her? They're both pointing the finger at each other and both saying that they're the real victim here. Let's bring in our power panel now. With me, law enforcement expert Sonny Slaughter, the director of prosecution projects at Florida International University and former homicide prosecutor Melba Pearson, and litigation, celebrity entertainment, and sports media lawyer Seth Berenswig. Thank you all for being on the program today. Okay, Sonny Slaughter, my friend, will you do me a favor and start the discussion off? Who do you believe? Good morning, Julie. Glad to see you back. So. I'm going to believe the evidence and what the evidence says based on that particular incident and what happened that night. What did the driver of the Uber or vehicle that they were in, what did he see? What did he notice? What did he hear? What did others see or hear? What is their relationship been like? So I want to stick to the facts and evidence on this one because both of them are pointing to the finger at one another. They may have had a long history of domestic violence and she could have recanted because that is often what domestic violence victims do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick to the evidence. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, Sunny. That is smart. Uh, Melba Pearson, let me go to you next, please. Really tapping into your experience as a homicide prosecutor. We know that these prosecutors believe her. They wouldn't have brought these charges forward. They would have withdrawn them. So they're seeing something here that aligns with her story, and they believe they've got the case to prove against Jonathan Majors. Uh, tell me about that process, if you would, please, Melba. What it's like when you have to vet your alleged victim. You know, police bring the case to you and you've got to take a look and see if you agree with the police assessment and it may not always be right. I'm sure you've withdrawn many cases throughout your career um, and, and that's what justice sometimes is, a, a withdrawal. Uh, talk to me, Melba. Take us behind the scenes, please. Absolutely, Julie. Good morning. So ironically, I do have a background as a domestic violence prosecutor as well. So this, this type of case is very near and dear to my heart. So my approach is always trust but verify, right? So the victim comes in and says, this is what happened. I'm going to at least believe them on surface value that, okay, you're not coming in and lying, but I am going to verify every single aspect of your story. I'm going to look at the evidence. I'm going to look at any surveillance footage that may be available. I'm going to look at any past interactions between the victim and the defendant. Were there prior calls for assistance where the police had to respond to their home or someplace where they were before? Are there relatives or family members or friends who can attest that there's been prior domestic violence between the two of them? And is what she's saying make does what she's saying make sense in the light of the evidence. If she's saying that he attacked her in a certain way in the vehicle, well, if the vehicle is too small, then clearly it couldn't have happened the way that she said. So you have to very carefully interrogate all of the evidence to make sure that you're not filing charges erroneously and then ending up in a miscarriage of justice. However, I will say that a lot of her testimony that we've heard so far does have hallmarks of classic domestic violence manipulation where threats of suicide, you know, trying to keep her away from her friends, telling her she can't go out, et cetera, et cetera. So there are definitely some elements there of concern, but the defense does have some solid points too. So we'll just have to see how this plays out. Melba, thank you for all the work you've done in the DV prevention movement. We'll have you back on the show to talk about just that. Uh, my friend Sunny knows we love to talk about uh, that on this show. It's important. It's a topic that is hard to breach, that's for sure. And it affects everybody. Very, very common. Uh, Seth Berenswig, uh, what a pleasure it is to have you on the show. Uh, I, I want to ask you something uh, that really goes 
to your expertise. You know, when you represent celebrities and you have a story that's swirling in the news cycle, and there are other concerns beyond uh, the trial, you know, the optics, communications, uh, what's being said in interviews, if any are being done. Would you kind of talk to me about the other concerns for someone like Jonathan Majors, who's someone in the public eye, he's got a lot to lose here. Uh, tell me what you would be concerned about if you're representing him on a case like this, please, Seth. Sure. So all the descriptions that I would add to that would not detract from the point that this domestic abuse uh, case, as alleged, um, is quite serious case. There are seven counts that have been asserted, so I, I certainly wouldn't do anything that would decrease the seriousness of the allegations in this case. That having been said, um, when a celebrity uh, faces these kinds of cases, it, it, it has a lot of implications. Of course, their liberty can be taken, and that is, first and foremost, really uh, something that would have a dramatic impact on their life. But it also is something that can really uh, drive a sledgehammer into their livelihood. There are um, uh, conduct and ethics clauses in contracts with studios that provide that um, there are grounds for termination or if there are allegations where someone um, is alleged to have acted in a, in, in a very improper manner. Um, there are a lot of uh, instances in the celebrity world where uh, people have lost uh, lucrative contracts because of these kinds of allegations. And, and this is a very serious case. The thing that is uh, curious about this case, and of course it happens in all these criminal cases is that there's really evidence on both sides and I think that the defense has a, a variety of um, uh, uh, points to note including the fact that um, she was dancing that night and there's a, a video that doesn't seem to be consistent with the underlying allegations. Mm, Seth appreciate it.